Coming up on this week's edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Are you ready to tune in to Tennessee for the 2021 Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show? We'll preview some of the great experiences Nashville has to offer for cattle producers and their families. And now, NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Hello and welcome to a special edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I'm Kevin Oxner. This time, we're giving you a preview of the 2021 Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA trade show that'll take place in Nashville, Tennessee. Now, this is the oldest and largest national convention for the cattle business, and thousands of cattlemen and women will gather together for several days of business, education, fellowship, and a whole lot of fun. We begin with Cattlemen and Cattlemen reporter Kate Maher, who has a look at some of the details on everything that will take place at this year's convention. Well, the Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show is headed to Nashville, Tennessee this summer in August. Our crew's been down here this week checking out a lot of sights and sounds around Nashville and fun things to do, but there's also a lot of other work that goes on behind the scenes. We're joined today with Kristen Torres of NCBA. Kristen, your team's been down here at the Gaylord and in Nashville doing a lot of behind the scenes work. Tell us what you've been up to. Well, we put a lot of steps in this week, that's for sure. We've been meeting with all of the suppliers and vendors. We're doing our best to make sure that we're putting together a fun, safe, educational event for this uh, summer in August, we're going to get the cattlemen together uh, here at the Gaylord. I know everybody's excited to get back together in person and we just got some really exciting news from the city of Nashville. Tell me what you know. We did. We are so excited. The mayor recently announced that all restrictions here in Nashville are going to be lifted as they relate to COVID. Everything with the exception of masks at the moment. Now, everybody is aware that things can change at a moment's notice with this pandemic. But for right now, we're full steam ahead and we are so excited. So the convention's really going to look pretty similar to what people are used to. Absolutely it is. We're working really hard to make sure that we're putting together, as I mentioned, a safe event, but an event that has fun networking opportunities. The trade show is going to be great. Um, we have tons of education going on, tons of entertainment. It's going to be the event that cattlemen have come to know and love over the years, and Nashville is by far our most popular city that we visit. And what a great way to celebrate. Uh, too much time apart and coming back together. Registration for this event opens on June 1st and we're standing in the Gaylord uh, right now where registration will be. Tell us what it's going to look like on site. Yeah, registration is going to look a little bit different this year. Again, in an effort to keep everybody safe, we're going to have actually four different registration areas so that we don't have everybody um, spending a lot of time in the same space. Um, but they're going to be spread out across the Gaylord, but this will be our main registration right here. Um, is there going to be anything different about um, touchless kiosks or anything different? I mean, we'll always have friendly people on staff to help everybody out, right? Yeah, absolutely. We actually have a whole COVID plan. And if anybody's interested in that, they can find it right there on our website. But they're going to find hand sanitizer everywhere. Um, we have actually a Santa crew, folks that are going to be going around um, reminding people to wear their masks, um, spraying hand sanitizer. Uh, Registration will all be touchless and cashless, which is very important this year. So we're only going to be accepting um, credit and debit cards, uh, no cash this year. That's really good information so folks come prepared. Kristen mentioned the NCBA trade show, which is always a huge attraction. It's just world known and it's going to be so exciting to have cattlemen and women gather in the trade show. Kristen, let's go check out that space. Let's go. Well, we got in some of those steps that Kristen talked about, and now we're standing in front of the Ryman Exhibit Halls here at the Convention Center where the trade show is going to be. Yeah, this is going to be the hub of it all during the event this August. We're going to have a great trade show. We have 350 exhibitors. We have over seven acres of exhibit space, indoor exhibits, outdoor exhibits, uh, shoots and scales on the show floor, Buddies, demonstration arena on the show floor. It's going to be great. 
And the exhibitors are going to be everything that you need to be successful in your cattle operation. Absolutely. Everything from A to Z you'll find on this trade show floor. This event is really for anyone in the cattle business. Now let's talk about registration types. Can you buy a pass for just the trade show if all you want to do is come and see the trade show? You sure can. We, we have a one day only pass that gets you all the education programs and we have a trade show only pass and that includes uh, lunch each day. It includes access to all the education programs that are on the trade show floor. It also includes a reception each day in the trade show. So it's way more than just your average trade show. And in addition to looking at all the great exhibits, you're going to run into people from all over the country and really have a chance to network with other cattle producers. Absolutely. We try to make sure that we have plenty of time and plenty of space for people to get together and make those connections that they need to. Um, as I mentioned, there's a reception each day in the trade show, and it's a great benefit for people to make those connections and um, find other people that are doing the same things that they're doing. Yeah, and then we've kind of all been through the same things together too. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Kristen, what else do our attendees need to know about registering, about schedules, about keeping up to date on the latest information? Yeah, so registration, as we mentioned, opens June 1st. And then all the information on the convention, the exhibitor list, the floor plan, if you want to map your way around before you get here, all of that can be found on our website, which is convention.ncba.org. We also have all of the COVID planning up there as well, and we will keep everybody up to date um, as things change or progress here in Nashville. Kristen, it's always fun to get a behind the scenes look at this. Thank you to you and your team for all you do to put on such a great event for our members across the country. Thanks for joining us in Nashville this yeah, week. Yeah, absolutely. We'll be back in Nashville in August, August 10th through the 12th, right here at the Gaylord Opryland Resort and Convention Center for the annual cattle industry convention. And of course, the NCBA trade show. It's an event that you're not going to want to miss. Come join Kristen and I in Nashville. Now this isn't the cattle industry convention's first visit to Nashville, and many of you have made the trip before. But for some, this is an all new adventure, and that includes the place you'll stay. Kate Maher has a closer look at one of the largest and most amazing hotels you'll ever see. Nashville is always a favorite spot for cattle producers to join across the country for the annual Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show. And we're here at the wonderful Gaylord Opryland Resort today talking with John Adams, who's the Vice President of the Gaylord Opryland Resort. John, thanks for, for being with us today. Welcome. You know, we're bringing cattle producers back to the resort here in August for our annual convention. We're just excited to be back in person. What do our attendees need to know in terms of protocols and safety and guidelines while we're here? Well, you're excited to be back here in person, but I can tell you that our stars at Gaylord Opryland are so excited to, to host National Cattlemen Beef Association yet again. It's been uh, three or four years since you've been here, and this will be the, one of the largest groups we've done in the last uh, 12 to 15 months. And so we are super excited for August to come. There are some changes, though, you know, that we've made, and things look a little bit different around the resort. A lot of safety protocols. Uh, you'll see very obvious when you check in. Of course, our uh, Gaylord stars wear masks and all of our guests wear masks when they're indoors. But most noticeably in the meeting space, you'll see how social distancing, some of the traffic flows and the way we set our tables and so forth are a little bit different, a little bit more spaced out. And the way we handle buffets and handle utensils and things like that. And the other items that we've added since uh, the group was here last are the touchless service features. So. Um, that's a great benefit whether we're in a COVID environment or not. So mobile check-in and mobile key and mobile service requests are great benefits really to all of our groups and, and guests. Yeah. Well, it's been a while since I've been here, and so I could say I'm asking for a friend, but I'm really asking for myself and all the friends that are coming back in August. Can you give us any just reminder tips on how to navigate this property that's a little bit big sometimes if you haven't been here in a while? Well, those of you that have been here will recall that uh, knowing your elevator is the most important way to navigate Gaylord Opryland. So we're going to give you a map uh, when you check in and mark your elevator very clearly. And when you finish with your meetings and uh, different networking and dining experiences, you're going to want to find that elevator. And we're going to have lots of human arrows and people around to help uh, assist with that. We also have a QR code that's available throughout the entire property, including at check-in. 
And that directs you straight to our restaurant guide and our events and activities guide. It's very, very helpful. That's great. You mentioned dining. Talk about some of the great places that our attendees can find, uh, find food here on property, especially beef. Well, I think um, Old Hickory Steakhouse, which is where we are right now, is one of the finest steakhouses in the country. And we have an 1855 um, beef program here that our chef has uh, laid out and uh, terrific local ingredients. We're constantly tweaking the menu. It's a traditional steakhouse, but we really always have a contemporary twist somewhere along the line. I would tell you that in addition to our beef and our chops and our seafood, I love the lobster bisque. I think it's the best anywhere. I taste it just about every day. And uh, you can't leave this restaurant without trying the coconut uh, cake either. Uh, I agree with you on the lobster bisque. It's always one of my favorite, and I have to have it at least twice while I'm here. Um, a lot of families will be coming. This has always been a really great family-friendly property, but there's a fun new attraction that families can check out this August. Tell us about it. Well, you're probably talking about sound waves, the nation's first musically themed water attraction that is indoor and outdoors, and uh, it's a blast. In fact, we're setting it up right now to open our summer season in late May, and uh, families, uh, adults, kids, really anyone of, of any age absolutely loves sound waves. It's uh, 225,000 square feet of fun, both indoor and outdoor. It's got 11 different slides, a giant LED screen that's playing music uh, around the clock. Uh, it's got an adult pool. It's got a giant family wave pool. Uh, it's got flow riders and cabanas and party rooms and restaurants and bars, and it's a lot of fun. That sounds great. But what a great way to beat the summer Nashville heat, too. Uh, John, thanks for your time today. Any last words to, to our group that's coming back in August? I mean, who better to have back as your first big group than cattle producers? Well, I think uh, number one advice I would have is uh, come a few days early and stay a few days extra because we're going to have a lot of fun together. Great. John, thanks for your time. We look forward to seeing you again in August. Thank you. Don't forget, that's August 10th through the 12th to tune into Tennessee for the Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show right here in Nashville at the Gaylord Opryland Resort. Go to convention.ncba.org to get registered. There's still plenty of time for you to make plans to join us at the Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show. It doesn't matter if you're a first-timer or a long-time convention attendee. We want to see you in Nashville. You can find all the details and get registered at the website convention.ncba.org. Still ahead on Cattleman to Cattleman, we'll show you where to go for a great steak while you're at convention. Plus, a look at some fun places you may want to visit around Nashville. Stay with us. We'll be right back. We didn't just design the 6M tractors with you in mind. We designed them with you by our side. The new 6M tractors from John Deere. Reimagined by you, for you. For a limited time, get 0% APR financing on qualifying 6 Series tractors and round balers. Experience the new 6M at your local John Deere dealer. Hey guys, it's Buzz Brainerd. You probably know me from the Music Row Happy Hour on the highway on Sirius XM and mornings on Y2 Country. Well, I am coming to you from the famous Margaritaville on Lower Broadway in downtown Nashville, Tennessee. And I would like to invite you to join me this August 10th through 12th for the Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show. This is the event for the cattle business and one that you do not want to miss. We've all been apart for way too long. So come on back to Nashville and CattleCon 21. I'll be there, I hope you will too. For all the details, go to convention.ncba.org and I'll see you here in Nashville. Welcome back. Today, we're taking a closer look at the 2021 Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show. Now, besides the fun, business, and networking of the convention itself, 
Nashville has many interesting places you might want to check out while you're in town. Kate Maher visited one site that football fans are sure to enjoy. in Nashville, Tennessee, I have to check out a football stadium. I've grown up a football fan and I'm so excited to be here today with James Peterson, Stadium Operations for Nissan Stadium, home of the Tennessee Titans here in Nashville. James, thanks for being with us. Absolutely. Happy to be here. So you lead a lot of tours in this. Give us a little history of the stadium, please. Yeah, so uh, name is Nissan Stadium. We've been here since 1999 when it was finished. Um, been through a few different names, which people don't always realize. We started as Adelphia Coliseum. Fortunately, Adelphia actually went out of business and had to file bankruptcy. So we became just the Coliseum for a couple years and then LP Field for 10 years. And then we've been Nissan Stadium since about 2015. Uh, it's super interesting stadium. We've had a lot of cool things happen here. Uh, for any football fans or Titans fans might remember the Music City Miracle. That happened right outside um, where we're standing right now. Uh, just a little history in that. That was actually the first year the Titans were here. Uh, had a good season, made it to the playoffs, we're playing the Buffalo Bills, and had this extravagant play drawn up. Uh, as time expired, they threw a, a pass across the field and ran it into the end zone to win the game. Uh, that momentum kind of pushed them all the way to the Super Bowl that year, and super exciting moment for us, as a, it being, like I said, the first season that the Titans were here uh, in Nashville at our stadium, and to make it all the way to the Super Bowl. Yeah, it's always great to have a home team success like that. Um, so. The field is kind of interesting too in itself. Is it a is it a grass field or a turf field? Yeah, so it's a it's a grass field. Um, one of the few left. Uh, we we like the the natural feel. The players like the natural feel. It takes a ton of money to to keep it up, but it it looks wonderful transitioning from football to we have soccer games here sometimes. Uh, it's a Bermuda hybrid, so it's called Bermuda 419. It's grown in actually a couple other states, and then they ship it here and we roll it out. Uh, it takes a couple days to to get it going, but. Uh, it, it is a really nice field. And it's always fun to, to feel football grass. So we're going to have a lot of families in town uh, when, we're, when our convention is here. And I mean, I grew up a football fan. I've been a football fan since I was a kid. I would have loved to take in a stadium tour. Is it, is it great for kids? Or are they, they fun to have around? Oh, it's awesome. Uh, so you get an opportunity to do a couple different things. You get to go into the Titans locker room, uh, get to see some equipment from some of our star players, uh, Derek Henry. Um, you know, then you get to go out to the field, uh, see what that real grass feels like, and then even going into our, our mascot's den. Uh, it's kind of a hidden little place, but it, it's a really cool opportunity for uh, all families, for everybody. That's great. Now, I'm sure you probably can't personally guarantee you that, uh, that we would see Derek Henry even today, but... Uh, is there a question that you get asked quite a bit on tours? Uh, absolutely. That, that's definitely one of them. Is, is Derrick Henry here? Uh, how much do I hang out with Derrick Henry? That type of stuff. Um, that, that's definitely the most common, uh, along with what type of grass do we have? If, surprisingly enough, people love that stuff. But um, unfortunately, for the most part, players aren't here. Sometimes they make guest appearances. You never know. But for the most part, they aren't here. But it's still a really cool stadium just to come and see. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, there's there's ton of information. Uh, we try not to bore you too much with all the statistics, but give you a lot of photo opportunities from standing behind the podium where the uh, coaches get interviews to in the locker room, out on the field and all that. Great. Well, like I said, we're bringing about 10,000 cattle producers to town in, in August. And not only do they make beef for players to enjoy, but but they also uh, happen to make a byproduct of the leather that, that is used in the footballs. Um, what's your message to producers as they come to town? Man, we're just super excited to have you. That's awesome. Uh, we're, we're happy to have you, and I think you should definitely come check it out. I might be the one giving your tour. Uh, if you do come by, uh, we'll have a great time. Great. James, thanks for your time today, and I can't wait to go check out the field. <laughs> Thank you. Well, you heard it. Come by and see James when you're here in Nashville for the annual Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show, August 10th through the 12th. One of the can't-miss events at every cattle industry convention is the Cattle Facts Outlook Seminar. A full house is always on hand to hear what the experts think about the factors driving the cattle markets now and in the future. Get all the details and register for the convention at the website convention.ncba.org. Still to come on Cattlemen and Cattlemen, we'll talk about this year's Cattlemen's College and tell you what you can expect from the cattle industry's premier educational event. 
Stay with us. We'll be right back. From the very beginning, Richie has been dedicated to one thing, helping people deliver fresh, constant water to their animals. Today's Ritchie waterers rely on a valve design that remains much the same as it was in 1921. It's a simple idea. Do it right and the rest will take care of itself. We never set out to create a company that would be around for a hundred years. We just wanted to create something great. They're here. They're hungry. And they can't be stopped with ivermectin alone. Add Safeguard when you deworm your cattle to take out resistant parasites like brown stomach worm, cuperia, nematodirus, and others. With two dewormers from two different classes, you can kill more resistant worms in your cattle, so you don't leave potential on the table. Consult your veterinarian for the diagnosis and treatment of parasitism, then bite back at safeguardworks.com. Welcome back. There are many great things to see and do at the Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA trade show, but Cattlemen's College always draws a crowd. And joining us now to discuss these efforts is Josh White, NCBA's Executive Director of Producer Education and Sustainability. Josh, thanks for joining us today. My pleasure as always. So can you tell us just a little bit about some of the topics and the speakers you have on tap for this year's Cattlemen's College? Yeah, well, first of all, we're just so excited to be able to do a, a convention in person and, and to bring this Cattlemen's College that now we've been planning for a year and a half uh, <laughs> to bear, you know. Uh, it's really exciting. We have uh, tremendous speakers from across the country. Uh, one of the things I'm really excited about is the King Ranch Institute for Ranch Management. We've given them a whole room to do, uh, you know, three back-to-back -back sessions. So if you've never had a chance to go to one of their events down at Kingsville, this is a great opportunity to see what they're all about and uh, their ranch management advice, which is really business focused, mm -hmm. long term planning, mm -hmm. uh, you know, ranch management. So That's everywhere exciting. from grazing to resource management. Uh, of course, we have our most popular topics as always, the cattle health, genetics, sure. nutrition, and then a hot topic series with a variety of topics, including our friends from the Animal Ag Alliance talking about mm -hmm. uh, what some of the activist groups are up to. So plenty to choose from. Well, I'm always amazed at the group of, of speakers you pull together. And tell us just a little bit about how you go about selecting both those topics and the speakers who will be featured there. Yeah, we work with our sponsor, Zoetis. Uh, you know, they come up with some great ideas, our team internally, and then we reach out to subject matter experts around the country. Uh, we pull together a, a team to review applications. You can go online even right now since we're already planning for 22 uh, and suggest in topics and speakers or if you're a speaker or, or an expert in an area and you want to submit a topic and submit yourself as a speaker you can do that at the ncba.org website under the producer tab. So what kind of reaction do you typically get from attendees of Cattlemen's College? What do you hear? So we do a survey, obviously. I mean, we get tons of hallway reaction, right, right of folks thanking us for putting it on and yeah. lots of comments. Uh, you know, the interaction has been just increased every year. We've got a lot of folks that are using polling software. I think our producers are more bold maybe than they used to be when I first started attending. You didn't get many questions, but, you know, they're really interactive, so you understand you know, what producers are taking from it and what questions they have right on the spot. Mm -hmm. And then we also have that official feedback through the survey mechanism that also feeds into the next uh, speaker selection, topic selection uh, for the next year. So folks sitting at home watching this interview right now, what do they need to know if they're interested in attending? Well, go to the uh, convention page at ncba.org and sign up. Uh, you know, there's you, you got to come a day early. That's the biggest thing, a little bit of extra cost. But we also include uh, more content than ever with some original content on Monday afternoon this year mm -hmm. uh, that you won't get on Tuesday. So be sure and get there early. There's some live cattle 
uh, genomic selection uh, mm. workshop that we're doing with, with the Zoetis Genetics team as well. So lots of interesting stuff. You and your team spend so much time planning this event, but also doing other producer education activities. Why is producer education so important in CBA? Well, you know, when we ask our producers why they're members or what interests them, you know, they want to know the latest and the greatest on all topics. We know that, man, the team in D.C. is knocking it out of the park for producers every day and for those of us that love the cattle industry. But, you know, one of the other big benefits is that producer education mm -hmm. that we provide, you know, our publications that we feed into as well as the webinar series, mm -hmm. uh, Cattlemen's College, Stockmanship and Stewardship, on and on. We try to add a lot of value to every membership. And some of the stuff uh, you can get without being a member, and we welcome you to participate in those like the webinar series as well. Very good. We appreciate all that you do. Thank you very much. Look forward to seeing you in Nashville. Thanks for having me, Kevin. The information and education available at Cattlemen's College is second to none. And you'll go home with new insights that just might change your cattle business for the better. Reserve your space for Cattlemen's College and register now for the Cattle Industry Convention itself at the website convention.ncba.org. In addition to Cattlemen's College, there are also valuable cattle handling demonstrations each year at convention. Kate Maher caught up with stockmanship expert Dean Fish to get his take on this important topic. Well, it's always a pleasure to catch up with friends that we've had on the show before, and today we're talking to Dean Fish. Dean, it's so good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Oh, man, I, I tell you, I'm just tickled to be here and visiting with you and getting ready to do another Another meeting. Yeah, so folks might be wondering why we're standing in this big empty hall. We're here at the Opryland, at the Gaylord Opryland Resort, and it's empty behind us now, but it's not going to be come August. We're going to have a trade show in here, plus we're going to fill this place with dirt and cattle. Maybe tell us about some yeah, of the fun things bet. coming so, in. So as maybe some of you have heard, um, you've, you're having a party and you're inviting five to 10,000 of your closest friends to come here, and um, we're going to talk all about the cattle industry and so forth. But here specifically in the, in the trade show, we're going to have a reprise of our very um, popular shoots and scales that we had last year. So we'll have eight of the world's leading shoot manufacturers, both manual and hydraulic, that will be demonstrating not only what their shoots can do, but it'll actually demonstrate with live cattle here in the exhibit hall. So we'll have tons of dirt come in, we'll set up panels, and we'll have that set up. We'll also have a stockmanship and stewardship demonstration, which um, many of our attendees and our members have come to appreciate, and we'll have a little Tennessee flavor to that. We'll be focusing on horsemanship and how we incorporate horsemanship into our stockmanship and then also just those good basics of proper cattle handling low stress movement of those animals we we'll have some BQA stuff in there um, just a ton of fun we have a ton of stuff planned for for our attendees so really a lot of educational opportunities folks can come in and look at shoots they may be looking for what fits their operation and I tell you what I could stay in the demo arena all day long and watch you work cattle but we're also going to have some other people in the demonstration arena too who's going to be joining well, we you? We have the world's best we have part of the stockmanship and stewardship team we have Kurt Pate and Ron Gill that are both going to be here taking the lead on different sessions throughout the day so you can just check your guide there and and see which particular session you want to go to but I guarantee you, everyone that you come to you'll learn something they're the top of their class in, in cattle handling, so it's going to be fun. Um, what else is going to be going on in terms of um, educational opportunities here on the trade show floor? Well, you know, on a trade show floor, I believe they have, um, they're have they going to have the virtual classrooms again, and so they'll be doing a lot of different stuff. All our vendors are going to be here. This is the largest cattle industry trade show, I believe, and if you are interested in what's the latest and greatest and better ways to incorporate technology or different products into your cattle herd and to, make, and to improve that, this is a place to be. This trade show is, is incredible. You know, Dean, I have to ask you, you've been a part of a lot of these. What's your favorite part of convention? Oh, man, my, my favorite part of convention is the people. You know, the people like yourself that I get to meet and see every year, um, you know, the, my colleagues at NCBA, but also my fellow members. You know, Todd McCartney and I kind of partner up and, and put these um, demonstration arenas together. You know, we're both proud NCBA members, and we see this as, you know, part of our service of giving back to the industry and helping to teach and helping to facilitate these opportunities. But just the folks that stop by the arena, 
know, that come and, you know, sit for a session and maybe come back because they saw something they liked or the ones that come back after last year and said, hey, you know, we incorporated a little bit of that bud box into our system or, you know, we're handling cattle a little bit differently or you made us think about not yelling at our kids when we're working cattle or something like that. So, you know, kind of those stories, but it really goes back to the people. You know, the people are what makes this industry. Um, you know, the majority of our American beef is produced by family um, farms and ranches and, and we're proud of that fact and we need to continue to um, celebrate that and help those producers, our, us, to get better at doing it. Yeah, I agree with you. The people is a favorite part of convention for me too. It's like a big family reunion and I sure look forward to seeing you and Todd and Ron and Kurt and everybody else in August. Thanks Absolutely. for being with us. Yeah, you bet, my pleasure. Registration's open now, so go to the website to see the schedule, learn more and get registered for this great event. We'll see you in Nashville. Still ahead on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, we'll take you inside the Grand Ole Opry, where an exclusive convention event will be held just for convention attendees. That story, when we return, stay with us. Grass is the center of our universe. We've got to have a grass program that we can count on and plan on. That's what we need to sustain us, to keep us growing, to keep us prospering. It's time to tune in to Tennessee. That's where the Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show will be in 2021. It's the biggest convention just for cattle producers. In Nashville, a city with amazing Southern hospitality that's packed with the best food and great music. You can't miss it. So make plans now for CattleCon 2021 at the Gaylord Opryland Resort in Nashville, Tennessee. Tune in to convention.ncba.org for more information. Nasalgen 3 is a new three-way intranasal BRD vaccine that offers young calves unrivaled protection against devastating respiratory diseases, including IBR, BRSV, and PI3. And it has a unique blue shadow, so there's no second guessing which animals have been vaccinated. To up your protection, choose new Nasalgen 3 PMH, the first and only five-way intranasal vaccine on the market. Talk to your veterinarian and visit nasalgen.com to learn more. Welcome back. If you're planning to tune into Tennessee for the cattle industry convention, then no doubt you're going to expect to hear some great country music. And one place where that will definitely happen is at the Grand Ole Opry for an exclusive event just for convention attendees. Kate Maher has more on this great venue that's full of country music history. Well, and a favorite attraction at the Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show is always the Grand Old Opry, and we're so excited to be back here this year and to have our Friday night event here. We're really pleased to be joined today by Dan Rogers, who's the executive producer of the Grand Old Opry. Dan, thanks for joining us. You betcha. Welcome to the Opry House. Yeah. Can you give us just a brief history of the Opry? Remind us, since it's been a while since we've been here. Sure. Well, we've been around 95 years and counting. The Opry's the world's longest-running radio show and truly the home of country music. Um, it's not an exaggeration to say that almost everyone in country music history has played our stage at some point in their careers. And hopefully there is a whole new generation of artists out there um, aspiring to, you know, take their first step onto that Opry stage. Looking back a little bit, is there maybe an artist or two that was really memorable that really put the Grand Old Opry on the map? Uh, I mean, you don't last 95 years without um, the work of a lot of superstar artists, but people um, always associate the Opry with back in the early days, folks like Roy Acuff, um, Minnie Pearl, and then along came, you know, legends, well, they're right behind us, folks like Johnny Cash and Whispering Bill Anderson and Dolly Parton, Loretta Lynn, I mean, that list goes on and on and on, and fortunately, um, those folks then kind of passed their love of the Opry 
down to another generation. So now we have, you know, artists like Brad Paisley and Carrie Underwood who um, come to visit as well. Yeah. Um, speaking of, of longevity and love of the opera, you've been here a long time. Tell us about your journey here. Um, I'm going on a quarter of a century. Um, I probably look it. Um, they're, they're long hours at the Opry. We're doing shows um, quite often, but it's just the greatest place to be. I started here as an intern and really feel like I've witnessed um, just some of the greatest moments in country music history. have watched artists debut on the Opry stage and then go on to you know, worldwide acclaim. It's it's the best job imaginable. Yeah, it makes it a really special place to, to be here and visit. Absolutely. So maybe a, one of your most memorable stories from your time here at the Opry. Would you share that with us? Oh gosh, absolutely. I mean, I will say that yes, there are memorable stories, um, but along the way, it's not an exaggeration at all to say every single night here is special. Um, it's the kind of place where you have many times three generations of artists backstage, um, and then three or more generations of fans out in the audience. Um, and this doesn't happen, as you know, that much in the world anymore that all these different people can kind of come together and agree on something um, and agree that this is two hours really, really well spent. And you know, who doesn't love to tap their toe and hear a song that, you know, they remember from their childhood or hear a, a brand new one or what have you. It's just, can't say it enough that it's a really, really great thing to be a part of. Yeah, well this summer, cattle producers from all over the country, cattle beef producers from all over the country are gonna be joining us here in Nashville. And it's a, it's a time of year that we haven't usually been there. So we, we expect some families to come and maybe pass along the love of the Opry and, and expose a new generation to the Opry. What can folks expect when they come here this August? Um, honestly, the unexpected, that's one of the best things about the Opry is it's truly unlike anything you may have experienced before. You'll see um, new stars of country music, um, legendary artists, superstars of the genre, and it's really important to us to showcase um, the different styles of country music that all fit under that country music umbrella. Um, you know, bluegrass, old school, classic country, um, hopefully and ideally those who are on top of the charts right now. Um, we love to throw comedy in and have done that since even um, before Mini Pearl. It's just, um, you'll see um, a whole lot of different styles and I swear the time goes by, you know, just like that. Yeah. Any last message to, to our attendees coming this summer? I just want to tell everybody that, um, you know, we tried the Opry um, during this pandemic without an audience. Um, and while that went fine, we definitely prefer um, loud, rambunctious fans out in the crowd. So come ready to have a big time to hoot and holler and, and clap for those on stage. And I think everybody will leave with uh, having had a great night. I, I have no doubt. Dan, thanks go. for your time. Thank you. Well, you heard it from Dan. Fill the seats here at the Opry during the Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show. That's August 10th through the 12th. You get all the information about the event at convention.ncba.org. There'll be some can't miss speakers and entertainment as part of the 2021 Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show. And your convention registration includes admission to all those great events. You can get all the details at convention ncba.org. Now, after all your meetings are done for the day and you've walked the trade show floor, you might be in the mood for a great meal. Russell Nemeth shows us an outstanding restaurant that's worth a visit. If you're looking for a unique steak experience while in Nashville, then you need to find time to stop by the JW Marriott. Inside is Bourbon Steak, which opened in 2018 and offers a one-of-a-kind dining experience in Music City. Nashville has been ready for the next level of dining and for a really uh, incredible service to come in here, and that's what we've delivered on. We've brought in unique products, great cuts of meat, uh, caviar, right, different items here that you can't necessarily get other places in Nashville, uh, and we've delivered it with world-class service that we're really known for. Having an incredible view up here doesn't hurt as well. 
That's right, the first thing that catches the eye when you enter Bourbon Steak is the 360 degree view of the Nashville skyline. We're up on top of the, uh, the 34th floor of the JW Marriott uh, Hotel here in Nashville, uh, one of the tallest buildings in the city. Uh, really has incredible panoramic views of the entire cityscape. Um, you know, you get to see downtown, you get to see the, the hills in the background, uh, all floor to ceiling windows, uh, not to mention our bourbon sky bar that has uh, open air. Uh, you really kind of get the full experience and see the city. The view isn't the only reason to visit Bourbon Steak. As you can tell by the title of the restaurant, Beef holds a prime place on the menu, and they take pride in serving perfectly prepared high-end steaks that are tender and delicious. What I really love about working in steakhouses is taking a really classic dish and putting kind of a modern spin on it. So not only do we have great meat here, but one unique process that we use is we have a butter bath that infuses all of the steaks with uh, clarified butter and lots of herbs and flavor. We also use a wood fire grill with locally sourced uh, hickory and cherry wood, and I think that lends a really unique flavor. So when you're in town for the cattle industry convention and in CBA trade show, the folks at Bourbon Steak encourage you to stop by, say hello, and have a steak. As someone who cooks a lot of steaks, what I would tell cattle producers is that we really appreciate all their hard work and we would love for them to come in and try our restaurant and have a great meal. We always love welcoming all of our guests, especially those that really know the product and know the steaks. Uh, this is the place to do it, right? And we would love to have them all in and really kind of uh, come see what we have here and experience the, the view, the ambiance, and of course the excellent steaks. Reporting from Bourbon Steak in Nashville, I'm Russell Nimitz for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Still ahead, we'll check in with the cowboy poet, Baxter Black. Stay with us. We'll be right back. These are the pennies it costs for Altisit IGR protection, making it one of the best values in the market designed specifically for fighting hornflies on pasture. As a supplement, Altisit IGR is part of what you're already doing. And as a feed-through, what your cattle are always doing. Take shelter from the swarm for just two to three cents per animal per day. That's just four fifty per animal per season for horn fly protection that has been performing for over forty years with no known resistance. Altacid IGR. Did you know that Prefort makes over a thousand different farm, ranch, and rodeo items? And now, thanks to Prefort Direct, it's easier than ever before to get access to every item Prefort makes delivered direct to your local dealer. For more information about Prefort Direct, visit us at prefort.com. Prefort, America's number one name in farm, ranch, and rodeo. We know you're up before the dawn because the cattle rise before the sun. And you spend long hours in the saddle because the herd isn't always over the next rise. And you care for the land because you know it takes care of your family. And we know you do great work. And it's time to tell that story to the marketplace. IMI Global is here to help you do just that. country isn't rural anymore. Uh, we've lost our down-home flavor and turned into connoisseurs. I admit that we drink Starbucks, but this I'll guarantee. We still live down a dirt road, get her mail or empty. Got a blue-eyed dog, he likes Mountain Dew, but he likes his chicken. Corn on blue is that, is that rural enough for you? Well, he took me to the Opry Where the fat girl sang real loud And when the show was over I applauded with the crowd Now I can take Beethoven Pavarotti now and then But I like my classical music With yodel at the end yodel Wine and gourmet food, but I like my caviar barbecued. Is that is that 
rural enough for you. Well, the truth is we're not hayseeds, we just come from deeper roots. I remember Grandpa sitting in his Sunday polished boots, rocking me ma on the porch swing, just as cool as he could be. His arm around her shoulders and a spit cup by his knee. I kicked the frog last night with my pocket knife. I licked it off and kissed my wife. Is that is, is that rural enough for you? I got a pickup truck that is spanking new Just me and the dog, but there's room for you Is that, is that, rural enough for you? I had a blue tick hound that died last fall I had him stuffed, he's on the wall Is that, is that, rural enough for you? that certain time in the day when you can take a deep breath knowing your work is done. That's the feeling Aspen products can create. Cost-effective alternatives to name brands that deliver the same results. Quillaxin is one of them. Use it to prevent and treat respiratory disease in your herd. Then breathe easy. Find them at Animal Health International. Cattle producers across the country work hard to care for their animals and their land. The USDA's Natural Resources Conservation Service is there to help. Find out how you can work with NRCS to develop a conservation plan for your operation. Find possible funding resources for implementing conservation practices or get free expert advice on ways to improve your farm or ranch. Visit the website nrcs.usda.gov today. have an upcoming production sale to advertise? Then contact the Cattlemen to Cattlemen marketing team or your breed association to learn more. Welcome back. Nashville has many places to go for art, history, and culture. Brian Baxter has more on the Tennessee State Museum and some of the great exhibits it has to offer. The NCBA Trade Show covers more than seven acres with exhibits, education, and fun that will keep nearly every member of a cattle producing family busy. But when it's time to venture out, a great stop for kids and adults is the Tennessee State Museum. This is a great place for kids to come and also just a great place for uh, generations of visitors um, to, just to come experience history and to come experience art. From our interactive space in the Children's Gallery where you can see and play on a floor map of Tennessee and engage with the stories of the state to even coming up and exploring perhaps our scavenger hunt through our galleries but to be able to see these artifacts that help tell the stories not only of the state's history but the nation's history. Admission to the museum is free and there's no shortage of history on display from the stories of the three U.S. presidents who came from Tennessee to the state's role in the Civil War. One of our largest galleries in the permanent exhibition space is our Civil War and Reconstruction Gallery. So we tell the stories of the battles that were fought here in Tennessee, um, but we also talk about how the war affected so many individuals. We are built to wander, and so it is truly self-paced. You can spend an hour here, you can spend four hours here. We have the Tennessee Time Tunnel, which gives history in a timeline. So for those of us who love to learn by chronology, we have that. But then we also have it by theme. So as you're going through the exhibition spaces, it's by time period and by theme. But it's just a great place to essentially get lost and find that subject matter that interests you. 
History truly does come to life at the Tennessee State Museum, and there are plenty of colorful, interactive exhibits that keep kids entertained and engaged. We do bring the history up to the present, so we do talk about sports, we do talk about military, but we also have this 360 theater that talks about communities across Tennessee. So it's just a great way to learn. Um, you know, even though we're, we're located in Nashville, Tennessee, we tell the story of the state. And so it's just a great way to engage with present day history. From the Opryland Hotel, the museum is just a 20 minute drive away, and it's located where visitors can easily enjoy some of downtown Nashville's outstanding outdoor sites. The Tennessee State Museum is located by Centennial Mall State Park. It's a great place to come and enjoy the outdoors. We have wonderful scenic vistas of the Tennessee State Capitol, one of the oldest working capitals in the country, and we're right beside Nashville's Farmer's Market. Uh, it's a place to come and enjoy uh, great food of Nashville from many different cuisines. As with everyone else in Music City, the people at the Tennessee State Museum are excited to see cattle producers and their families coming to visit. Beef production is an important part of, of Tennessee and a part of the state, and so we welcome you to Tennessee and we welcome you to Nashville. Um, here at the Tennessee State Museum, we tell the story of Tennessee, including the agricultural history of the state. We hope that you come join us, uh, enjoy free admission, bring your family, and we look forward to seeing you here. At the Tennessee State Museum in downtown Nashville, I'm Brian Baxter reporting for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. The value of the convention to anyone involved in the cattle business can't be beat. The convention is set for August 10th through the 12th. You can register and get your housing all set at the website convention.ncba.org. Well, that wraps up this special edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Thanks so much for spending time with us. I hope you'll join me in August in Nashville. It'll be a trip you'll never forget. And we'll see you again next week right here on RFD TV.